learning to navigate our complex world and to advance the sustainable development goals. As we mark the 10th anniversary of the UN Plan on, of Action on the Safety of Journalists, the Secretary General calls on governments and the international uh, community to take the necessary steps to protect our journalists, to end a common culture of impunity, and to enable journalists to do their essential work. A quick note to add that UNESCO's report on the safety of journalists is out on the agency's website. Okay. As they say, once, once, once more with feeling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm going to skip. I'll go back. I'll do the first one last because I. All right, somebody's clearly joined us. Um, you saw a bit earlier today we issued a statement which the Secretary General war warmly welcomes the announcement from the Russian Federation on its resumed participation on the implementation of the Black Sea Grain Initiative to facilitate the safe navigation of exports of grain, foodstuff, and fertilizer from Ukraine. He is grateful for the diplomatic efforts of Turkey and thanks to UN coordinator Amir Abdullah and his team for their work in keeping this vital food supply line open. Uh, the Secretary General continues his engagement with all actors towards the renewal and full implementation of the initiative, and he also remains committed to removing remaining obstacles to the exports of Russian food and fertilizer. Uh, speaking of the Secretary General, he is, uh, as we speak, uh, hopefully in the air on his way back to New York. We expect him to land uh, shortly. Uh, he was in Algiers last night where he addressed the opening session of the League of Arab States Summit. In his remarks, he said he looks forward to continuing our work together with the Arab League to, to address the challenges across the region and advance peace, sustainable development, and human rights. Turning to the issue of climate, he said that COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh will be another vital opportunity for restoring trust between developed and developing countries. His remarks were online and shared with you. Quick update from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where, as we've mentioned a number of times before, renewed fighting between the Congolese army and the M23 groups excuse me, the M23 armed group has forced, forced thousands to flee their homes in Ruchuru territory, North Kivu. Many of those displaced have been living in schools, hospitals, churches, and other sites, although the majority are living with host families. Despite severe access constraints, humanitarian workers have started helping displaced people in Yarongo territory, providing them with water and health care. Our partners are also able to distribute food to some 50,000 people. More than 180 unaccompanied children have been identified and assisted by child protection workers, while some 2,000 others are receiving psychosocial support. The needs still exceed uh, the needs still exceed present capacities, especially in the south of Kanye, Kene Health Zones in Lubero Territory, which was already home to some 50,000 displaced people. The most urgent needs include water, hygiene, sanitation, as well as essential household items and shelter, food, health care, and protection. For its part, the peacekeeping mission in the country continues to protect civilians, to work alongside the Congolese army and to deter the M23 and other armed groups in the eastern part of the country. To do so, the, the mission is maintaining multiple positions where possible in the zone of hostilities. And following consultations um, with national partners, the peacekeeping mission withdrew its, soldier, its peacekeepers from its base in Rumang uh, Rumangabo in North Kivu, an area where Congolese army is no longer present. Sadly, we've had to report an incident against peacekeepers that took place yesterday. A crowd of people threw stones at a peacekeeping convoy, which was at an army checkpoint near a site for displaced people about eight kilometers north of Goma. Two peacekeepers were injured, and at least one mission vehicle was set on fire. Peacekeepers fired warning shots to ensure safe passage of the convoy. Our colleagues note that this type of violence and destruction of equipment limits the mission's capacity to carry out its mandate to protect civilians and support the delivery of humanitarian assistance to vulnerable communities. And uh, just north of the DRC in the Central African Republic, uh, you saw the last night we issued a statement in which the Secretary General welcomed the completion of the first trial of the Special Criminal Court in the Central African Republic. 
uh, the UN mission and uh, the UN mission in that country reports to us that it's continuing its efforts in support of national authorities to protect the population around the country. Over the past week, military peacekeepers conducted over 1,600 patrols, nearly 20 percent more than in the previous week. This includes operations in Zangba on the border with Democratic Republic of the Congo that has now covered more than 280 kilometers over one month and is showing results. This week, the peacekeeping mission repelled armed groups in, ba in uh, Bada in Baskoto Prefecture, seizing weapons and materiel. The operation also accompanied uh, by, excuse me, also the mission, Whew. a lot of words today. Uh, the operation is accompanied by the repairing of roads and bridges, as well as community engagement activities to improve ties with the population and better understand their problems. Meanwhile, in Bangui, peacekeepers are continued to patrol, uh, providing uh, convoy escorts to help secure the capital and its periphery. Peacekeepers also conducted medical uh, camps, conducted medical camps this week in Bangui, among other places, and distributed 47,000 liters of water of drinking water, benefiting about 1,500 people. Uh, moving on to Haiti. Um, our human rights colleagues there tell us that 200, at least 243 civilians were killed, another 198 injured in September and October. Uh, regarding cholera, the data collected by authorities shows a continued increase in the number of suspected cholera cases, with close to 3,400 cases recorded as of yesterday. The Pan American Health Organization continues to provide technical assistance to the Ministry of Health while procuring medical supplies and equipment, including 300 additional beds to increase the capacity of 15 currently functioning cholera treatment centers. In October, UNICEF and the National Water Distribution Authorities distributed over 300, 331,000 liters of safe drinking uh, water at a site for displaced people. UNICEF and their partners have also reached uh, over 11,500 households in Cité Soleil with cholera prevention communication. Our humanitarian health partners are providing health care to 600 people, including 400 children across Cité Soleil. Uh, in the past few days, our colleagues in the World Food Program carried out special food distributions also in Cité Soleil, as well as Cap Haïtien and Messade in different departments. They reached close to 22,000 people which is nearly double the number of people reached since the fuel crisis began in September. Finally, during the past week, the International Organization for Migration provided 29,000 non-food items to health partners working in cholera treatment centers. Um, and uh, just a note from, um, from Lebanon, the International Support Group for Lebanon, which includes the UN, issued a statement today that notes with concern the continued lack of cooperation among Lebanese political actors that has precipitated a presidential vacuum. That vacuum comes at a time when Lebanon most requires quick and decisive action to address its dire economic, financial, and institutional crises. More than ever, the support group says Lebanon needs fully functioning state institutions that can pursue comprehensive reforms with a strategic vision that generates substantive change for the public good. It calls on the members of parliament to elect without delay a new president of the republic who will unite the Lebanese people in their national interest. A um, couple of uh, notes to share with you. Uh, tomorrow there will be an event at 315 um, in the Dag Hammarskjöld Library. It will be done in partnership with the City College of New York and it's to launch the selected papers of former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Uh, the collection of selected papers are now available online and provide a previously unseen look into the work and thoughts of our previous Secretary General during his 10 years in office. Uh, Mr. Ban will be there in person uh, tomorrow, 3.15, and he'll be joined by the Deputy Secretary General, who will open up the event. Um, today is the International Day uh, to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. In his message, the Secretary General reminds us that a free press is vital to a functioning democracy to expose wrongdoing, navigate our complex world, and to advance the sustainable development goals. Lastly, a uh, big shout out uh, to our friends, uh, the tour guides today, uh, who are all in their own way spokespeople for this organization. Uh, they celebrate their 70th anniversary of the guided tour operations. 
The same day the doors of the UN headquarters of this building opened in 1952 uh, to mark the occasion, an exhibit on the history and role of the tour guides as ambassadors to the public is on view in the UN visitors' lobby. The UN Postal Administration has issued a special commemorative stamp sheet for purchase of the stamp shop, and a press release is being shared with you. Uh, being a tour guide is a great formation for UN staffers. Uh, Michelle and then Edie. Thanks, Steph. First of all, sorry, did you say anything on Ethiopia? Uh, no. Do, do you, would, you, have do you a, like to ask me something on Ethiopia? Yes. First of a couple of questions. Do you have mm -hmm. any reaction to the announcement of a ceasefire? Uh, yes, we've just seen uh, the announcement. Uh, we obviously will be looking into the details, but it, this is very much a welcome first step, uh, which we hope uh, can start to bring some solace uh, to the millions of Ethiopian civilians that have really suffered uh, during this, on this conflict. Thank you. And on uh, Ukraine and the grain deal and Russia's resumption of its participation, can you now give us more of an idea of what uh, the Secretary General has been up to over the past few days in terms of trying to get this deal back on track? And how does he now feel about the chances of actually getting it renewed again before November 19? Well, we, we very much hope uh, that the deal will be renewed, fully implemented. Um, I think the Secretary General had been uh, working a lot of, phone a lot of phones uh, over the last uh, three days, uh, speaking to a wide array of, of member states. I think what is clear is that the world as a whole has a stake in the, um, in the full uh, implementation of the initiative, as well as in the, the removal of uh, any obstacles in the trade of Russian uh, grain and fertilizer. Can you tell us Edith, who we spoke to? Uh, I will not go any further. And just, sorry, one more thing. Um, Iran is a member of the Commission on the Status of Women. Mm -hmm. Does the Secretary General believe they should remain a member of the CSW? Uh, who gets to sit on which commission is a decision that member states themselves member states themselves take through an electoral process. The Secretary General has no role or voice in uh, in that decision. What I would say uh, is that and I've said this before is that for any country that is the member of a council or a commission on a certain issue, I think has even greater responsibility. Uh, in ensuring the full implementation of the, the mandate of that commission or group. Ms. Letter. Um, just one more follow-up on the grain deal. Um, we know that President Erdogan had direct talks with the Russians, at, as did the Turkish and Russian defense ministers. Was the Secretary General involved personally in any talks with Russian leaders? Yes. I mean, the, 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 it, I'm not hiding anything from you. Secretary General did not have a direct conversation with President Putin in the last three days. He did, however, have a number of conversations uh, with various Russian officials. Okay. And secondly, um, the DPRK, North Korea, launched its greatest missile barrage today, including one missile that went across the uh, demarcation line, and the South Koreans responded. Does the Secretary General have any response to this escalation? The Secretary General remains seriously concerned. Uh, about the increasing tensions that we're seeing on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, the DPRK's continued launches of missiles using ballistic missile technology are clear violations of relevant Security Council resolutions and contribute to increasing regional and international tensions. There is an urgent need to renew diplomatic efforts. The Secretary General urges the DPRK to immediately return to the negotiating table. He also urges the key parties to resume their diplomatic efforts with a view to achieving sustainable peace and a complete and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and to foster an environment that is conducive to dialogue. Benno. Thank you. Another uh, follow-up on the grain deal. Are you aware of any conditions under which Russia joined 
um, the, the initiative again? No. Then a question about Haiti. Can you give us an update about the SG's efforts of um, establishing a supporting force? For the I country? mean, you know, the SG's recommendation was that member states uh, gather together and come up with a plan to send a uh, to send a um, a force to to help deal with the, the the police situation the security situation we understand those talks are still ongoing but we have not been uh, nothing at least been shared with us as far as i know of any breakthrough on that front the situation is not improving on the ground so it becomes more and more important um, for member states to heed the secretary general's call Betul. Steph, I'll just follow up on the grain deal. Uh, you talked about the phone calls the SG had. Uh, can you please elaborate on these phone calls? Did the SG talk to uh, any Turkish officials? And what did he uh, talk about? With, and did he also talk to the Ukrainian officials? And if he did talk to the Turkish officials, did he get anything uh, on the renewal of the grain deal? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the renewal is automatic unless there is an active uh, is an active no. Uh, he spoke to, uh, I know he spoke to the ambassador here. I, I'll have to check if he spoke to anybody else, but you know, our colleagues in Istanbul were in constant contact with the Ministry of Defense uh, in Ankara, the Ministry of Foreign, uh, Foreign Relations as well. The Secretary General spoke to President Zelensky. Um, I mean, I, I know he was on the phone almost constantly all day on Sunday, most of Saturday, um, and I know he didn't. You know, I, I know he didn't leave his house on Sunday because he was just on the phone, literally all the time. Um, in these types of crises, uh, I think the Secretary General is one to uh, involve himself uh, directly and uh, speaking to his advisors uh, and speaking to to PRs and ministers and whatever he needs to do. Is he hopeful about the renewal of the deal following his uh, conversations yeah, he, with various uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Griffiths, officials? I think, stated his optimism. We very much hope uh, it will be done. Uh, as I said, this is, this, is not, this is something for the benefit of the sake of the world. I mean, we saw, if I'm not mistaken today, um, uh, a downward trend in the, the wheat future prices as soon as the announcement was made. So we know this has real-life consequences for millions of people. Victoria. <clears throat> Hello, thank you. Uh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Is, is yeah. Best so, I've been called worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to ask also about grain deal. So, mm -hmm. Russians said that they joined, uh, the, rejoined the grain deal after they got written security, security guarantees uh, from Ukraine. I wonder uh, whether you heard about uh, the written security guarantees and uh, whether the Russians. Uh, uh, gave some guarantees that those vessels, they, well, you so much, I mean, the military ships uh, Ukraine attacked, would not bomb Ukrainian cities and towns in future. Look, I, you're, you're basically asking me to speak for both uh, the Ukrainian government and the Russian government, which is not something I can do. Uh, our colleagues in uh, the Joint, Co uh, Joint uh, Coordination Center in Istanbul Throughout the weekend, we're talking to the Russian delegation, we're talking to the Ukrainian delegation, obviously the Turkish delegation. Um, we know there were, there were contacts, I mean, reported in the press between Turkey and, and the Russian <laughs> Federation. What is important for us is that uh, the suspension is, is no longer in, in effect, and we, we expect ships to start moving tomorrow. Madam, and then Gregory. Thank you. Uh, Stefan, two questions. The first one is, um, what is the uh, feeling of the Secretary General on what is happening in Brazil? We know that it's being protests in the streets, but mm -hmm. also the President Bolsonaro hasn't really publicly conceded. And the second question it has to do with the Venezuela talks. We know that yesterday uh, the President of Colombia met with the President of Venezuela, and one of the points that says that hopefully they will restart the talks in, in Mexico. Um, the UN had the possibility of getting involved. Um, can you give us any advance on that? Okay, uh, I'll, go b I'll go backwards. Uh, the rapprochement, I think, between Colombia and Venezuela is something that we very much uh, welcome. It is good for both countries, it is good for the region, uh, and also good for the humanitarian uh, situation. I don't have any updates on the talks themselves. On your first question, my answer is the same I give about every country after an election, is that we, we, we hope 
that all those who have issues with the, the elections or the election results use the existing constitutional or legal avenues to address whatever concerns they have. The Secretary General spoke on Monday with uh, President Lula. Uh, he congratulated him. They've known each other for quite uh, some time. A quick follow-up. Um, is any concerns of this rhetoric of before the election happening to have uh, politicians, and in this case, the president of, of Brazil and his team, to question the uh, transparency of the election, to question the system, the machines, is that create a, a, a worry for the secretary general of this type of rhetoric, um, um, creating a seed of doubt on, on people? I think it's very important in any country that citizens uh, have, uh, have full faith in the electoral system, and those who are part of that electoral system support uh, support the institutions. Gregory, thank you, very <clears throat> thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, Russian Foreign Ministry and its statement today said that Russia is strongly committed to uh, in the in the miscibility of nuclear war and committed and also committed to uh, any confrontation of uh, nuclear states. So, do you have any comment on that? Well, I mean, it, that's that certainly is the goal of the Secretary General to never have to see uh, any nuclear conflict. Yep. Um, thank you. Um, uh, my first question is about uh, the call for uh, of the Secretary General uh, to uh, to Lebanese parties to end the the presidential vacuum and to elect a president. Uh, of the Republic of Lebanon. So what are the measures uh, that the UN could, could do to help? I mean, we, we, we c the UN and the international community cannot substitute itself for Lebanese political leaders. There are, there's, there's, an elected, there's an elected parliament. Yeah. Uh, leaders, whether it's in Lebanon or ever, need to live up to their, to their responsibilities. Right, the, a, a president needs to be elected in a country that faces institutional crises, financial crises, and also all, I mean, cholera, all sorts of, of, of crises for which, it, 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 in order to deal with those crises, you need strong institutions. Uh, we will, we, uh, through the international support group, will always be there to help uh, in any way we can uh, the Lebanese people and to help Lebanese leaders move forward on a positive path, but we can't substitute ourselves uh, for them. Um, the, the cooperation of the governments uh, in Syria and Lebanon uh, with the UN, are, there co are there, uh, they cooperating with you with, as UN uh, in terms of fighting cholera, or uh, how do you assess the, their cooperation? Well, I mean, it. it, it First of all, it is the responsibility of any state to take care of its own people. So uh, they are in the lead in dealing with these crises, right? We are there to support state institutions. You're dealing in Lebanon uh, with, a, with a country that has had for years now severe financial institu uh, challenges, which has an, in, in, an implication on the healthcare system, on the water distribution system. In Syria, you have a country that has, faces years of conflict, uh, and we know that for a fact that sometimes water distribution system has been purposely targeted. Um, and so there is, w w when you're dealing in a conflict zone, uh, the access to fresh potable water for everybody becomes a challenge. So we're working with both the governments in Syria, the government in, uh, in Lebanon, to try to help them address the crisis with the full support of the UN system. Ms. Fasulo. Thank you, Steph. Going back to the uh, Black Sea deal, um, we know that Secretary General, the Secretary General advocated that <clears throat> the arrangement be a two-part deal, the second, of course, being that Russia be allowed to ship its fertilizer, food, et cetera, around the world. Last week, you mentioned that it's primarily a commercial deal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's so the UN doesn't have a big role. My question is that given the SG's major support of this, um, do you know if there is any communication going on with the countries perhaps that would have clout with the insur you know, with, in other words, we've heard that country ports are blocking the export, some, some ports, 
and that insurance companies, uh, ship it, ship shipping companies are not providing whatever's needed to ship out yeah, goods. Mean, so the question I have is, um, the, the countries that have clout, perhaps, in giving assurances to the commercial companies, is there any pressure or, shall well, I say, discussion th from there, the UN in yeah, facilitating I mean, it, it, that? Exactly. There, the, the discussions the Secretary General is having on that, uh, on, on, on the facilitation of, of trade of Russian fertilizer and, and uh, and food products um, is primarily with the European Union, the United States, and the United Kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we very much hope uh, to see progress in that department. Madame. Hi, it's my debut, Amanda, Stephen BC. Um, I just wanted to get your reaction. Earlier today, the White House accused North Korea of supplying Russia with weapons which they believe will make an appearance on the battlefield in Ukraine. And so I'm wondering what the UN reaction is to this, considering this comes on the heel of allegations that Tehran is also supplying the Kremlin with weapons. Well, we have no, uh, we from the Secretary point of view have no uh, way of, of verifying that or another. Uh, there are uh, existing sanctions uh, against the DPRK. Uh, I have no doubt that this will be issued that will be seen by uh, by the um, uh, by the group of experts, by the sanctions experts. I mean, our, our feeling is that we don't want to see more weapons go into that theater. Uh, we want to see relief uh, for the civilians that have been suffering. Ms. Kubiak, you are up to brief, and thank you. And that's the... La Vista. La Vista. 